Joining us now is David Schoen, former Trump impeachment lawyer. David, um, hearing arraignment and former president together in the same sentence, I mean, I'm not at all surprised about this because I do believe they will do anything in their power to stop Donald Trump from having the possibility of being the GOP nominee and uh, defeating Joe Biden or whoever the Democrat nominee is. Uh, so this doesn't surprise me at all. But how far out over his skis is Bragg on the legal aspect of this? Any American who even considers the idea that Mr. Bragg could indict President Trump ought to be outraged. It's a strike at the rule of law. It's a strike at our Constitution. And the fact that anyone could be talking about an indictment or an arraignment after Bob Costello's testimony today is even more than outrageous. The grand jury had to hear exculpatory and impeachment evidence. The prosecutor had an obligation to present that. Until Bob Costello testified today, they hadn't heard that. Bob Costello's testimony is qualitatively and material, materially different from anything they've heard. Cohen spoke to him as a lawyer. He, Co Bob Costello has 330 email exchanges. Bob Costello spoke in detail about what, what Mr. Cohen told him that's diametrically opposed to the story that he's telling now. And what's most telling about it is, apparently, according to Bob, the DA said that they didn't know these things. They met some 20 times or so with Mr. Cohen, and they didn't know that he had spoken with Bob Costello, that Bob Costello had done a debriefing with the U.S. Attorney's Office. This opens all kinds of floodgates. They must demand notes from the U.S. Attorney's Office. Bob Costello is the former deputy chief of the Southern District of New York U.S. Attorney's Office. He was represented in the debriefings by the former chief of the criminal division in the Southern District. He's entitled to great credibility, and they only heard from him begrudgingly. They only let the grand jury hear six of his 330 emails, and he had to continually keep telling the story about what he knew. They had eight prosecutors in there. They didn't want the grand jury to hear the right. truth. They didn't, they didn't want to hear from him at all. He volunteered to go into the grand jury, and this, is what, this was at the 11th hour, apparently. I mean, first it was... Former President Trump's going to be arraigned uh, tomorrow, or indicted tomorrow. Now they're pushing it off till next week. It seems like they're enjoying this, you know, the drag out of this. Again, more distraction from Biden's failures across the board. But the In statutes my, yeah. themselves, if I could just go to the statutes sure. that perhaps they would be leaning on here. Can you explain why these are absurd in this case? Uh, 175.05 first. A absolutely absurd. 175.05 makes it a misdemeanor with the intent to defraud to falsify business records. First of all, I don't believe that business records were falsified, but secondly, with the intent to defraud. And what they want to do here is use a novel theory, not just to uh, uh, bring an indictment against an ordinary person, but against the president of the United States, unprecedented, makes it a felony under 175.10 of the New York uh, penal law if you committed the falsified business records with the intent to fraud and you did it to try to conceal or commit another crime, which they say here is, well, he did it to conceal a campaign contribution. He did it to affect the campaign. Did Hillary Clinton make a campaign mm -hmm. contribution when she paid someone to bust up her computers without a campaign contribution? There are so many, facts that, so many facts here. Beyond all of that, there's a reason we in the law have a statute of limitations, and in New York, a five-year statute of limitations for a felony. Witnesses aren't around anymore. Uh, people's stories change and all that. These allegations are more than seven or seven years old. They were re reviewed and rejected by the Southern District of New York, most prominent office in the country, by the Federal Election Commission. So why Mr. Bragg now? Because President yeah. Trump is up in the polls? Because Mr. Bragg campaigned on an anti-Trump, I'm going to get Trump campaign since 2021? Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what he's doing. Uh, Bragg wants to run for governor. That's what I believe. I think this is about Bragg and his future in politics. He's the first African-American in this role, and I think he wants to take this all the way to the governor's mansion. That's what I think this is about. Maybe, who knows, run for president someday. It's all well, about Bob him. Costello, Bob Costello today gave him an out to save face once and for all and back off of this and say, we didn't know these things. Now yeah. that we know them, we cannot go forward with Michael Cohen as the key to this case. Yeah, I don't. They're too far in. I don't think they're going to back off, but maybe I'm wrong. David, thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.